Good evening, fiends. Are you ready? Let's get spooky. Hello, fiends, and welcome back to another episode of Let's, Let's Get, Get Spooky. Spooky. I'm Vamp. And I'm AJ. And today we are talking about, this is actually a, uh, yeah, a fan a request. Yeah, long-time viewer, friend of the show. We love you. Second shout-out um, in an episode, Miss Elaine. Thank you so much for suggesting this topic of Spooky Bucket List. So we'll talk about... Places that we want to go, but we'll also sneak in some places we've been. Yes. To inspire you in case you want to go to some cool places. Which I feel like um, we were talking about this a little earlier and you're like, we're both pretty well traveled. So we've been to a lot of places. Some yeah. of the same, some, some different. It's funny because there's some stuff that, that's on my bucket list if I want to go to and you've already been there. There's and some, vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, some of the places that we'll be talking about. So. One cool thing um, when you're traveling to a new place, whether it's a haunted place mm -hmm. or a not haunted place. Oh, it could be like a normal town. Like yeah. this is one thing that Matt and I do. Anytime we go and visit somewhere, we always do a ghost walking tour. Yes. Like pretty much every city has them. Like even like non-spooky cities like Chicago, like we will go and do like Just a walking a general tour walking because tour. It's, an, it's something that we like. We're super interested in like spooky and ghost and stuff like that but then it, it's also a great way to see the city because you're walking through and you're getting a guided tour by somebody right most of them are like i think most of the ghost ones are like 90 minutes or mm -hmm. two hours um, but you can get some that are like 45 minutes depending on the place if you're looking for a haunted tour there's a company called ghost ghosts and gravestones and they do a trolley tour it's like a hop on hop off a lot of the times mm -hmm. and though they do i think san diego uh, Boston, they do Philly. There's like a bunch of places that they operate in, but you can find any sort of, some of them are the trolley where mm -hmm. you're like getting driven around, which is kind of nice because in oh, bigger yeah. cities, oh, yeah. you have to they're, walk. You literally just look out the window and you're like, yeah. oh, cool. And then sometimes they're like, okay, this is a special stop. We're going to get yeah, off we'll at this grave off. or this uh, cemetery. You can walk around. Um, so yeah, I've done a couple of the ghost and gravestones. I've done the Boston one and the Savannah one. And I think those were both like about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, the Boston one, I think when we did it, it was raining. So it was cool because it was spooky, but it was also kind of unfortunate because it was wet and like well, it adds soggy. an atmosphere to it. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend doing it when it rains. <laughs> Personally, I was like, oh, this would be way more fun if I wasn't super soaked. Um, Savannah was really cool. Um, and I'll talk more about that later because we had an, an extra special experience with the Savannah Ghost and Gravestones. And then I think the one that we did in Salem, I don't know if I've you've, done so many different we've ones. We've probably in done Salem. the same one. It was the nighttime yeah. walking tour. There's so many, like, and they, uh, yeah, like I've, we've done every time we go, we've, we've even done like the same one a couple times. Yeah, like, we've done the same one too because yeah, you get a, you get get a different, a different guide. guide and it's yeah. like a total different experience. And essentially, you're getting like a history lesson. If they're haunted ones, mm -hmm. then you get sometimes they'll have like a little bit of ghost hunting involved. It just depends on the tour, but yeah. it's a great way to get a quick lay of the land. And then what we would do is after, if there was like a certain spot that we're like, that was really cool, but we were only there for five minutes, we would go there on our own mm -hmm. um, if you're able to do that. So yeah. um, highly recommend walking tours. And yeah, I don't know if there's any that we've um, done that. The Lond we did London ones, which was really cool because like the one that we did, one of the ones that we did was the Jack the Ripper tour. So like it brought <sighs> you to all the like one. Jack the Ripper sites of yeah. like, you know, where people were found and stuff, which is cool. Um yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, we did, uh, recently we did a New York one, which was like a mobs and gangs one, which was super Ooh. cool. Keep the change, um, you filthy like they, It was a little bit of both. They, it also had like some like spooky kind of ghost stuff because he's like, so like we did like, you know, cool like mob stories and then, which was cool because they like kind of broke down like, you know, that kind of backstory yeah. history and stuff, which was cool. And then some uh, ghosty stuff. Um, San Francisco has a lot of really good, uh, tours even though like I lived there <laughs> like we would still do the ghost tours how many times have we talked about like when you live in a certain place there's so many cool things mm -hmm. and a lot of the times you're like 
eh. Like you're because not it's drawn right to there. It's so easily it's accessible. It's just like it's like I always use this as an example of like you know everyone's like the Golden Gate Bridge. I want to visit the Golden Gate Bridge. It's so cool. And yes, it is cool. But I literally drove over that Golden <laughs> Gate Bridge twice a day to get to and from you're work. Like, Screw so that like, bridge. To me, it was like transportation yes like you know i just saw it as a bridge but other people are like it's this really cool like landmark and it is but i uh, it's but also it not as times. special to me like you most. probably wouldn't do a guided tour about the golden gate bridge because you it's part of your daily life yeah um but also i feel like a lot of the times like one of the places that's on my been there list so we're going to talk about places that we've been like we said earlier mm-hmm. and then our bucket list so um my been there list top one is the Queen Mary. And technically mm. I've been there multiple times. We've done um, Dark Harbor. Is that what it was called? The haunt at the Queen oh, Mary? Oh yeah. I never went to it, but it sounds really go with cool. us. Mm-mm. It's, it was one of, they don't do it anymore, but it was one of my favorites. Um, Cause you're on the Queen Mary, but we've never stayed there to do the, the goat. They, they did like a ghost tour and w- the, we never stayed in any of the haunted rooms, but I feel like that's a perfect example of just cause it's right there. Yeah. We never were like, oh, we're going to do like a little staycation or go do it. Just we never got around to it. Yeah. Um, and now I feel like you, they still have some things there, but I feel like they're saying that it might sink. Like There's so much damage on the boat and it's so expensive to fix. That's wild. That all of the things that you used to be able to do. There's a lot of things that you can't do because mm-hmm. parts of the boat are not safe. So I don't I don't know how long much longer it'll be yeah. available, but I feel like that's something we should definitely do. Yeah, well now that I know it's sinking. <laughs> well, um, I don't know, don't quote me, but I feel like I've, it's it's not in something it's, something's something's wrong at the it's Queen not Mary. In perfect condition anymore. Um I I yeah, I I don't think I've ever been to the Queen Mary, but up in San, up, up in the Bay Area, we had the USS Hornet, which is a very similar thing, a big boat, you know, whatever you do on those big boats, but we, we did ghost hunting there too. You, know, you, you could live on it. <laughs> you live you on it. Sail they the land, ocean. They land planes on the top. Yeah. You There's know. a lot of things that happen um, on boats. But we, we ghost hunted there and it was really cool. Um, I just remember like, you know, where they would sleep, like the little, like the bunks that are on like the chains and like, they kind of sway a little bit. I just remember like bunks on chains. On what? Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah. You know, so it doesn't like get all messed up and stuff. I don't know. I have a picture, <laughs> but like, yeah, it We're was really cool and all boats. spooky. Cause like you're literally walking through and it's like these cramped corner, like corridors. Well, that was a military cool. boat, right? So that would yeah. have been different than the Queen Mary, which was like a, Oh, I thought more, the, I thought the Queen Mary was a, well, at see, one point it was for Queen it, Mary. right. The Queen Mary it was, was overboard, but it, Oh, it's, it's, it's a recreational it's boat. Like oh. people would go on vacations. Yeah. It's very, so it's, it, it would be very different. The That's why I was like, okay, yeah, on never chains. mind. It's 100% different than the USS Hornet. <laughs> the USS Hornet is literally like, it's a military it was boat. a military yeah. boat. And they basically like, they have like literal planes and stuff like on display within it and on top. Aircraft and carrier. Yeah, yeah. It's an aircraft carrier. So, I mean, they're both boats. <laughs> they're both. They, they're they, both haunted. They float on the water. That's all I know. <laughs> Their purposes were just a tad bit different. A tad bit different. Uh, so, <laughs> next. The Apollo missions. The, the USS Hornet? Oh, yeah. They have one of them in there, and you can actually crawl inside. Oh, that's cool. The ones that they come back into atmosphere in. I feel like after every place that's easily accessible, we're going to be like, we should go there. Yeah, we should go we there. We should do a ghost hunting trip there. Um, so, my next one is actually on your... Um, your mm. want to go or your bucket list. And by the time this episode comes out, probably I will have been there because yes. I am leaving for there in a couple of days. Yeah. So my next one is the Paris catacombs in mm-hmm. Paris, France. And so the catacombs is, I'm sure if you're into spooky things, you've seen photos of the catacombs. It is super cool. So when we got there, we were, I think it was the first day that we were in Paris and we're like, we're going to go do the catacombs tour. And, we just kind of showed up. We didn't have tickets. We mm. didn't have anything really planned. So there is a, a self-guided walking tour where basically you buy the ticket, you go down the stairs, and you can just walk around. But it's a very um, – secluded is not the right word, but it's a very, like, distinct path. You're only mm. able to go on the, the general path. Oh, I'd find a way. Well, it, everything – it's, like, old school. So it's, like um, – 
iron gates and they're locked oh. and everything. So it was it was still amazing, but we got there basically right before it closed. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, it's only open for like another half an hour, but if you want to go, you can go. You just have 30 minutes. So we went. It was amazing. We got so many cool photos. It was really spooky and more so because it was just three of us. Like mm. the day was done. It was getting dark. Yeah. There was no one else in there. So every little creak and crack and everything, you're like, <laughs> oh my God, it's a ghost. Um, but after we the, did the tour, we had a friend who was like, oh, you should have told me because my friend could have gotten you on the, they call it like the spelunking tour where you have to wear the, what do you call those? A waiter's pants, like the uh-huh. rubber pants. And you get the to- light bulb you, on your head? Yeah, yeah like full Flash on, on your head. Um, investigation. And he had access to like certain spots that you didn't have access to for yeah. the- $15 tour that we went on. Yeah, we were joking um, that it's the As Above, So Below tour. Yes. If you've seen that movie. It's a fantastic film. I and don't want to end up like that. <laughs> but I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. And she's like, hell no, I'm not doing it. So you'll have to tell us how you, I don't know which tour you're doing because there's a bunch of different options. Um, Matt when, booked it. I okay. will let you know after. All right. So um, <laughs> yes, that's on my been there, but on your bucket on list. My, yeah, on my bucket list. And uh, one that's on my been there list that's kind of similar to the, the catacombs, um, but it has, um, you know, six, uh, six million less uh, body uh, bones Skulls. of people, mm-hmm. um, is the Edinburgh vaults in Scotland. Um, I didn't know there was like underground stuff there, but we took a trip there and we were searching different tours that you can take. And that was one of the ones that came up. And basically um, there it's like just this underground area. They literally look like little vaults. And there's different ones. Uh, they were built in 1788. And they were vaults used as taverns, vaults, markets. Uh, cobblers would be down there. It's like, a, it's like a market of some sort. Like you would go down there and you would do business. It was like just a part of everyday life. I wonder why they like, did they do that because of the weather? Or like what was their motivation to build this town yeah. underneath the town essentially? Yeah. Space, maybe I'm yeah. not 100 percent sure, but makes sense though. They used it for 30 years, and then of course, once something stops being used for you know normal mm-hmm. things, it uh you know kind of became decrepit, and people were using it for illegal activities. All the hoodlums go um, down there. The homeless were using it as a place for shelter, but then also body snatchers uh, would keep their corpses there overnight because it's underground. It's, it's cold. very cold. Um, <laughs> But we did a tour there. It Body snatchers. I mean, body snatchers. <laughs> um, but it was super cool. Um, like seeing like this old, like it, it's really cool because like also they discovered it because one of the, I think it was like one of the shops, like a normal shop mm-hmm. was like, what is this trap door that goes down? <gasps> and they kind of cool. like discovered it because like, you know, shops, because they were using it as storage and stuff, they would have... Basically, like you know, you just a trap door, like not a trap door, but like you know, a the door that you go in and yeah, down to go there. down there and just down these stairs, and they just all of a sudden started discovering it, and they're starting to uncover more and more, and seeing that it gets it's like bigger than they even thought. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was a really cool one that we did. Edinburgh Castle is on my list, um, on my my spooky bucket list, but I didn't know about that. I didn't know about all of that underneath, yeah. and I feel like in a lot of older older towns there there that it's more common than you think mm-hmm. like in a lot of the south there's a lot of underground tunnels under businesses yeah because essentially like the um people that were working on boats would as would go to these like taverns and they would take drunk people and like smuggle them out through the tunnels and basically they would be like servants on these boats like they would wake up from their drunken bar night and they'd be like oh wow oh. I'm, I'm stuck on this boat oh, and then i'm a forced, pirate now exactly I'm forced i live to on the sea now cool. but like most of when we were in savannah like there's so many towns in the south that it's just a part of the lifestyle at the time i mean they're not being used now for the most part i'm sure it's probably just storage now but and they're probably not very clean or safe oh i'm sure that's, um they'll but yeah crumble at any point we don't have that here like in southern california we're not not that I can think of. I mean, I'm sure there's places that have underground tunnels. Ooh, Lizzie Borden House. Have you been there? No, I want we to. We talked about we, this yeah. multiple times. So we've done, so the Lizzie Borden House um, is in Fall River, Massachusetts, which is like, I think maybe like 45 minutes or so outside of Boston. Mm-hmm. It could be like a little more, or a little less, but it's not too far. Um, I've been there twice for the daytime tour. So mm. you can go anytime during the day and it's just like a guided tour through the house. They'll talk about the 
the axe murders mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. Um, but it's like you're in a group, um, a big group, and you just walk through. It's maybe like an hour. You can also rent the whole house. You can rent a room, so you can stay at the bed and breakfast. You can just be in a room, or you can rent the whole house, which is what we talked about doing. Yeah, because I looked into it, and it's actually like not as expensive as you would think. No, I feel like the last time we looked, it was like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, but it also like depends on the a, time. Yeah, I think it depends on like if it's a low, like you know, occupancy kind of time. They'll like, they're like, okay, whatever. Yeah, it's like any hotel in the summer. It's yeah. way more expensive. We looked at it. I think that one time in like December, which. It's a little problematic because it's in Massachusetts, so it's cold it's and snowy. Freezing. Yeah, but we plan on staying inside, and I'm sure that they have central heating in that house. I hope so for, for all the tourism. <laughs> um, but you can essentially rent the whole house out, and it's a bed and breakfast. So there'll be they do like a nighttime tour. There'll be a guide mm-hmm. runs you through the tour, very similar to the daytime tour, but I think they give you a little bit more of the spooky kind of history Mm -hmm. because the daytime tour had that but I remember the girl saying oh if you come back for the nighttime one like I'll tell you all the other things too that's probably like the light version and then they have like the hardcore version where they go into like the super spooky stuff yeah like later I think the I think whoever runs the place is like nearby but they're not staying in the house with you so they do the tour then they leave you and then someone comes back in the next the next morning because it's a bed and breakfast Mm -hmm. and we'll make breakfast so we were like Holy shit, that would be so cool because you have the, if you rent it all out, if you're staying and just renting a room, you don't necessarily have like full reign because there's other guests in the hotel or in the house. Yeah, you have to be, yeah, I remember looking on the site and they're like, please be respectful to the other, like if you're like no hallway shenanigans shenanigans after a certain time if there's other guests there, but there could be all the hallway shenanigans if you have the house to yourself. Uh So um, I feel like that's definitely something that we'll eventually have to do, but Rent the house out, ghost hunt all night. Mm-hmm. There's like a crazy Ouija board in that house too. I don't know if you can use that. You might have to bring your own. You know how I feel about them. I won't be using it. Um, I won't. But um, yeah, definitely on the uh, the list of places to revisit for me, even though I've been there a yeah. couple of times already. Um, which which brings me to my like my next thing. Like renting out these places for the most part seems like it's not that hard because there are a few things on my been there list. I got to go because we basically just rented it out and we were able to do what we want. Uh, Preston Castle, uh, which is in Ione, California, um, it was constructed in uh, 1894 as a, a as the Preston School of Industry, which was a reform like uh, reform school for boys, um, and had some like, you know, it's a reform school. You have like kids that aren't haven't done much, and then you have like kids that have done really bad things like murder and they go there and they also murder um that was the one place that i got touched there's little murderers there yeah little murders little murders you know little murders (laughs) um but that was one of the ghost hunts where i literally physically got touched i feel like i talked about on the show once but just in case you haven't but haven't heard this but yeah down in the kitchen there's said to be two spirits in that area one was this woman that worked there and she was found murdered and they said it was one of the kids. And then there's another spirit of a boy who was at the school and he's sort of protective of that one spirit. And we were sitting in a circle in chairs and my boyfriend, Matt usually like was like sitting next to me. And sometimes like during ghost, like things like ghost hunting isn't exact like in real life isn't like this tv shows where you're running around yelling at ghosts come at me bro it's not like that in real life (laughs) it's literally sitting in the dark and hoping that something happens and being quiet and being quiet because you need to like you like you need your senses to be like okay you're listening you're like you know that kind of stuff so every now and then like you would reach over and do like that Mm -hmm. and like you know a little pinch yeah like hey i'm here type thing um so we were sitting there and um, we were asking questions to these two spirits because uh, the person that we were with um, was like, yeah, they're very, they're sp- like, you know, we can send, you can hear them and like, you know, things happen here with those two spirits. So we were sitting there asking questions and then all of a sudden I feel that. The pinch again? The pinch. And I thought, it, I looked over and he literally had both of his hands. Like he didn't do it, which normally I'd be like, that's so cool. Yeah. But it freaked me out because it was like it seemed like it was watching and learning our actions 
to like try because to it trick felt you so much like it was matt yeah but I, it wasn't him so i'm like that is crazy and then um one of the we actually heard verbally because someone asked a question like are you here protecting her or something like that and literally like with our own ears down the hall we heard a very loud no Ooh. so all this happened all at once and i was like this is insane this is like and you guys were paranormal there activity you guys rented rented it out yeah. so you could do your own yeah. investigation yeah so that it was it was a similar situation like we just we went in at um as it was getting dark they had one person with us just to make sure because it, it's like a, it's a really old like yeah it's a really old like building. for safe, like safety kind of, of purpose where you can go yeah and, and also that. like just to let us know also like you know this is the best spot where you'll get something like things like that so like it wasn't like they were like guiding you guiding us 100%. it was more like they were giving hints yeah and also just making sure that we don't fall through the floor right. or something like that. A safety um, guide. Yeah. yeah. And then you you basically are there for like a certain amount of hours and then you can do whatever you want. And then they're like, okay, thank you. Bye. That's awesome. Yeah. We also did that in Virginia City in a couple places. The Washoe Club um, was super cool. They have a crypt, um, which is basically like, <laughs> it's like kind of underground-ish, but it's all stone. And like you literally go in and you can feel the temperature drop. Because that's like where they would keep their bodies, and and it's like it's nice, like yeah, because it's like spooky. nice and cold in here. Yeah. Uh, they also have the Fourth Ward uh, School Museum. It's a museum now, but it was a school. Uh, and that place was also really cool. Uh, Mackey Mansion. Um, that's this is all Virginia City. This is all Virginia City. So like, if you go there, like, there's a lot of really cool places to visit. Um, that was a place. Uh, Mackey Mansion is where. Johnny Depp was staying when he was filming Dead Man and he saw a ghost of a girl there and he was like, I'm never returning here again. <laughs> no, <laughs> so if it you. turned Johnny Depp away, you know it's got to be pretty yeah. spooky. And down this, at the end of the street, because it's like, it's literally one street and then like there's a couple like random stuff off. They have like a cute little like old timey cemetery. Like it's literally like the one at Knott's, oh, but like cute. real. <laughs> like a, a, a boot hill cemetery, yeah. but real life. Like it's super cool to see, but at the end of the street, there's a really good barbecue place. So if you go. I have, go. I have so many like been there haunted places. And, um, I know I've talked about this before, but I did a show called ghosted where basically oh, yeah. I got to go through the South and visit a ton of haunted places. And there's a couple places on the list that really stood out to me. And, um, so some of them were like, uh, I could see that it definitely has haunted history, but really nothing happened for me mm. there. But for other people, they have plenty of stories. Um, one of the places, this is this was the very first town. So we were in New Orleans, and it's called the Andrew Jackson Hotel. And essentially the story, people see um, a ghost of a woman that's like, imagine like a maid, like someone cleaning up mm -hmm. in kind of old-timey maid clothing and so one of our experiences there is we we had a medium come out and basically do like a session with us in one of the hotel rooms and it was unfortunate because it was the very beginning of this experience for me and this woman comes in and she does her thing and like I'm not trying to discredit anyone you know but everything as she tried to like started to explain what she was seeing she was suddenly possessed by this maid and like everything that she did after reading the story I'm like you're just like playing out the story yeah. that is the top haunted story for this location. So we started off there and I was like, wah, wah, not haunted for me. But what, she start cleaning and stuff? She's no, all going around No, she was dusting. just like possessed by the maid and, and like everything that she said was like the main story. Like if you Google oh, the main story, yeah. I was like, and you she reached just had it A, memorized. B, C, exactly. Um, but then, so we left New Orleans and... On this show, we, we are in, like, I think four states, and we do multiple locations in each state. But next, we went to Vicksburg, Mississippi, and I would say that this is most likely, like, the thing to me that I was like, whoa, and it freaked me out a little bit. And um, so we're in this house, and this house is basically, it was... Um, was built in 1797 so it's really old yeah, so as you're walking old. through the house you can kind of tell what part of the house was um there at the very beginning and then they had added on to it so it gets like a little bit more not modern but a little bit more um it, you can see the what am i trying to say you can see like the difference the like you're walking through and you're like oh this spot is obviously is very beginning. old and then you walk this into the, the next end. room and you're like okay maybe they added this on so it was it became like a field hospital it was also uh on the trail of tears so mm. the property is just littered with bodies yeah. of of 
from tragedy to like natural deaths, people dying in the home. And there was one moment where we're walking up the, the staircase and it's not necessarily like a spiral staircase, but a very steep little staircase um, off the side of the kitchen. And I remember walking through and it's, it smelled like someone had baby powder and they just whoosh, right in my face, oh. like so insanely strong. And I remember stopping and looking around and asking, I'm like, do you guys smell this? Does, does anybody smell this? To the point where I was like, dude, someone's fucking with me. Yeah. Like this is, there's someone has like, the, where's the air freshener, <laughs> someone checking has the, all the, all the outlets. And there's no outlets in this part of this is an older part of the house. And so I had said something to one of the, the tour guide that was with us. I forget her name, but she was like in the full dress and giving us the whole tour. And she's like, oh yeah, right under the staircase is where the little kids would play. And there was like mm. a table with toys. And it was just that moment where you're like, what the fuck? Because like you didn't know that information. I had no idea. Beforehand. And then you get this phantom smell. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, it makes sense. It's all connecting. Like- yeah. And I looked everywhere. I was like, maybe this is just like a trick they're playing on me. Maybe they do have something and someone sprayed There's something. There's literally <laughs> someone in the walls. They're like, okay, wait till she walks but by. Wait till it's so. One other guy experienced it. Well, yeah. Oh, so no. one other person had experienced, one other person on our crew. But then later in the same house, um, Cameron was upstairs and he would do this thing. And I feel like I've said this on the show before, but he would do this thing where he would go to like the darkest corner mm-hmm. where no one else was at because he wanted to have his own experiences yeah. and like not be influenced by anyone else. So he goes upstairs into, I forget the man's name, but it was essentially like his, the changing room. What would be today a closet, mm-hmm. but in their changing rooms would be where they would like smoke their pipes and have a, their scotch or whatever. Um, so it's this, this, small little room outside of the bedroom and he's in there and he comes out and he's like asking people if they're smoking and we're like what are you talking what are you talking about you can't smoke here no one's smoking there were people on the crew that did smoke but like when we were filming and stuff like that you couldn't these were like old historic places so he comes out and he's like is anybody smoking and then it wasn't like were you smoking a cigarette it's like anyone smoking a cigar he smelt like He was like, no, it was basically like my baby powder experience. Mm -hmm. Like someone lit up a cigar and was like puffing it in his face. And we, (laughs) I went into the room, people, like multiple people went in. We're like, we don't smell that. Like that's not something that's happening here at all. Mm -hmm. So it was like, there wasn't necessarily like a physical like apparition or anything like that, but it was things that we couldn't explain. And we were in complete control. We had rented out the house. There was no one else there. And no one was trying to screw with each other. Like mm-hmm. we were legitimately like trying to do our job and he, he couldn't explain it. I couldn't explain my experience. And then again, he told the guide and she's like, oh yeah, that's, you know, so-and-so. And that's just where he would smoke his cigars yeah. in his it changing room. And we're like, holy crap, you know? So it's things like that, which are amazing to have your experience, but you can't necessarily share that with anyone oh yeah like it's not on camera there's no way that you could that I can do anything other than explain it to Mm -hmm. you so um if you do get a chance it's a really cool old house and it has a ton of history and we had I mean that was just some of the evidence that we got there there was plenty of other stuff that we got um you can watch it on ghosted but um, I'll take the baby powder experience McRaven house didn't I say the name oh McRaven house it's the McRaven house in Vicksburg Mississippi I suck at my job. Sorry. <laughs> but now you know. Um, um, you have more? I mean, I think the, the this these last couple that I'll just touch on, it's just because of, like, living in certain places that are just surrounded by history. So, like, like I said, when I lived up in San Francisco, like, you're surrounded. Like, we had a lot of really cool, like, kind of spooky haunted stuff around us, like Alcatraz. Mm-hmm. Um, there it's was a very also, old city or, old, yeah. you know, so there's a lot of There's a lot. A lot more there's history. also, like... Um, a lot of tragedy there, like, you know, with the earthquake and then the, uh, the fires and stuff. So, like, it, there's a lot there that would equal ghosts. Yes. Um, <laughs> San Remo Hotel, where um, it's, it's kind of close to the Fisherman's Wharf. It's like an older hotel was built a little bit after the 1906 earthquake and has a lot of really cool history that we ghost hunted there a few times. Um, I think this was on your want to go list, but the Winchester mystery house yes, still have not been there. One of those, like, it's just like, it's just crazy. Like this is like this really cool home that has all this history and is said to be like haunted and stuff like that was like 45 minutes away from me. And I went there a couple times. It was really cool. Well, I mean, 
I feel like that place is, there was a movie that came out about it and yeah. then it got a lot of people got really excited about it, but it's been around forever. You could do mm -hmm. the tours for, I mean, so many years yeah. before the, the movie came out and you can now, I think for a while it was, it was closed and then you couldn't you film couldn't, there. Yeah. Like I remember like I went, one of the times that I went was after the movie had just come out which was, re it was really weird because they had all these signs that are like, you can't take photos and you can't take video. And we were like, that's so weird. Cause like we've, this is probably our third or fourth time coming and that's all the other the times, point. Yeah. like, you know, I was able to take photos and videos and stuff. And for, I think it was like weird. They were explaining that it had to do with the movie production of like, they had a temporary, like, I don't know, like some type of hold or something where like people couldn't take photos. Because they probably just within. didn't want people to give it away. Like Maybe. they didn't want you to show you all the the um, cool parts. Because there was some cool parts in the yeah. movie where you're like, oh, that's wild, that's weird. Yeah, looking, like or crazy. She looking. had like a seance room that was above, um, like near the kitchens, and like, like you know, there's like all these different stories of like you know she was kind of like a little weird. She didn't like trust people. So she had like areas where she would like listen in on the people that worked for her. And you know, well, the, whole the whole story, story was... that she, so she came from uh, the Winchester rifle. Um, she married the man whose family created the Winchester rifle. And um, she had, she was super into seances and stuff like that. And she had a medium, a medium told her, Basically, because she had like bad luck in her family. So they're like, well, you have this bad luck because of all the like, you people know, all the died. yeah, all the people that have died from the Winchester rifles. So she started doing construction. Like, well, they, they said were that she around had, the, the spirits clock. told her that she had to keep. Yeah. Building. She had to keep building. And she would also like. So, and there's also like a few different theories because we don't know 100%. Like some, like there's stories that, you know, she, this, like yeah, the spirits told her she needs to continue doing construction 20, like, you know, basically around the clock. Then there is also like their stories where they're like, well, no, she did the construction because she wanted to keep changing the house so that the spirits wouldn't know how to get her. So, you know, there's uh, this the, you can see online, like there's photos of the stairs that go literally to, to nowhere. Nothing. Like it, it goes into the ceiling and there's nothing stories. there. It's yeah. And it's like, how all, is it even seven stories? It's like weird. Oh, Cause they're not like full stories. It's not so like segmented. One, yeah. It's like this part of the house is probably seven stories. And this other one is, is like two or three. It's 160 rooms. Um, so there's 10,000 panes of glass and 47 stairways, some which yeah. go to nowhere. But like, and you then, think that's huge. Yeah. And then also she got, I think she got sick to where she couldn't really walk up stairs really well. So then they like deconstructed all the stairs to be normal stairs. And now there's like these ones that are literally half steps and you oh, can't yeah, fit like the... the half steps in the same space as like a normal staircase. So you literally are like winding up these stairs doing these little half steps and it's like not the easiest thing to walk on as like you know because you're so used to like doing normal yeah but Wild. she was super into like par like like you know like i said seances like the superstitious kind of stuff like like um a lot of the panes of glass have like really cool like spider web kind of like stained glassy stuff there's a lot of numbers of 13 throughout the house like there's um one room where on the wall there's 13 hooks they're just like these hooks and you're like why are there 13 <laughs> hooks what were you hooking like, on those hooks there's like another one there's like this beautiful stained glass that's a spider web and there's 13 like little like circles throughout it like things like that and it's super, just really cool yeah, and it's like, and there's also like doors that you open, and it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> like it's it's definitely a place that you would want to visit multiple times because every time that I went, I noticed something different. Yeah, and I feel like the tours that you can go on aren't very long. Like you, you're, I don't think there there's ones unless you were able to rent out the whole house where you're like, here, just go in and walk yeah. around. They're guided tours. Yeah, they that do. Are available. They, they add time slots, and you have to stick stick with the group. You can't really walk off on your own. Uh, so that's on my bucket list. One place that I want to talk about, and I kind of mentioned it earlier with the uh, Ghost and Gravestones trolley tour. So when we were in Savannah, this was also for Ghosted, we uh, explored the Gribble House, and this was a stop on the Ghost and Gravestones trolley tour. Mm. So the Gribble House right right now is basically, uh, it was, well, in the past, was a home where um, axe murders were committed. Ooh. And 
the three people that were charged for the axe murders basically murdered, I believe it was three women, and then they were let go. So I don't know what happened in the legal system, why they were eventually let go. But the house is no longer there. Right now, it's a warehouse. So the warehouse mm. is where they park the trolleys for the Ghost and Gravestones trolley tour. So we stopped. We got the basically the lowdown of the Gribble house, the story of everything that went down. And then we got to do an in- investigation in the warehouse and the where the house would have been like so say you're facing the warehouse would have been like the back side of the warehouse like the right corner i think and then the left corner is where we had like crazy stuff happen but we got some crazy stuff on evps and then at one moment we're just like filming our show minding our own business and the alarm goes off mm. and it was so loud it scared the shit out of me and as we're trying to figure out why the alarm goes off, why the alarm went off, the owner of the warehouse says, well, he checks the cameras and the one camera where the alarm went off stopped working. <laughs> so we couldn't see what happened, but we know what would have triggered the alarm. There's a motion sensor. And it was in, if you ever worked in like any sort of retail space, there's what they called like the cage. They have it like at Costco. When I worked at Circuit City, we had it. And the cage is essentially where it's like a chain link cage where all of the expensive merchandise goes. So say someone buys like an Xbox, you have to go to the cage to get it because oh. it's not just left out on the floor. So they had this like caged off area where they, it was just storage for them. They had like just a bunch of stuff, but there was a motion detector because... If someone came in and stole something, it would set off the motion detector. So at one point while we were investigating, something set off the alarm and we were like, okay, we'll just go to the camera and see what set off the alarm. Camera stopped working. And it was just like so crazy. And from what I remember, he said that's never happened before, right? The alarm has never gone off. They've gotten tons of activity in there, EVPs, Mm -hmm. um, actual apparitions caught on camera. There was one woman that took like a, a photo and in the background of the photo there was like a ghostly figure of a woman which is something that they've seen before um so if you get the chance i don't know if you necessarily be able to do that because that's not part of it's like a stop on the trolley tour like oh and to your left is the gribble house but because the guy that ran it owned that warehouse he was like come on in you can do an investigation yeah and it was so cool and that was just one of the stops on that trolley tour in savannah and savannah is essentially built on um like graves because Mm -hmm. they started building the town and they were like well we can't move these bodies anywhere so we're just gonna build on top of them (laughs) sounds like san francisco although they said they moved the bodies well i feel like they didn't move all the bodies i feel like most of the time they say oh we relocated the bodies and it's not like you're gonna check you're not gonna be like let me dig under the foundation (laughs) but you didn't (laughs) move the bodies um so yeah so the whole town of savannah is super haunted we were actually looking at homes for sale and you would see the the signs because they have to disclose and it would say like haunted and there was this one beautiful it's a selling point probably for me yes yeah i mean I, oh for most people no this one has a garage but this, this one's haunted. haunted and they were beautiful and we looked at one and i was like does that am i reading this wrong that house is insane. It was like, it looked like a home out of the French Quarter that had mm-hmm. like the wrought iron little balcony and everything. It was beautiful. It was like a dark gray, black color, haunted. And I looked up, we were like looking up the prices and it said $40,000. And I'm like, this is a joke. We should have bought that house. Oh, but yeah. But you also live in Savannah and I can't, it was so humid. It smells yeah. a little bit like a fart there. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It's true. It's what? a it's a paper mill town, so paper mills uh-huh. have that like fart, fart smell. Farty smell. I don't know how else to explain. It smells like a fart. Um, they say you get uh-huh. used to it, and I can attest to that uh-huh. because we were there for a couple days, and by like the third or fourth day, I was like, I don't smell the fart anymore. It's just normal. Are you sure? Like the whole town isn't just like like methane twenty four seven. I mean, like nobody wants to blame it on anyone else, so they say it's the factory. I feel or like that's a lot of gas. Hey, man. And I feel like maybe Sometimes you should see a doctor. you gotta. But on the other hand, it's very haunted. There's beautiful history there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous town. There's tons to do. Um, once you get over the fart smell, it's like, it's awesome. Uh-huh. So Gribble House is <laughs> is really cool. Um, and you can see it on the Ghost and Gravestones trolley tour in Savannah. Or see this, the spot where it used to be. Um, what else? Do you have any other places that you recommend um again just being in la there's a lot of really cool places down here one of the 
like one of the really cool things that I well I think it's really cool we have a lot of really cool cemeteries and also um celebrities they die just like us <laughs> um so yeah you know they have to be buried somewhere too so um yeah Hollywood Forever Cemetery I know we've both been there a few times it's it's like Yes, it's a cemetery, but it's also just like a beautiful park. So like cool. you could actually just go there and just have a picnic, which yeah. is really cool. But you can't film or shoot there. Bring out a camera and the man on oh, the bike will come after yeah, you or the golf cart. In. Yeah. Do not. Um, but there's some really cool people there. Franz Waxman, really good composer. Uh, Peter Laurie. There's a really cool Johnny Ramone mm -hmm. uh, memorial. Dee Dee Ramone. Uh, Vampira, Judy Garland's there. Many, many others. And you can also, there's, you know, not celebrities there too, but... Yeah, but there's there's also they do um, like Synespia oh, yeah. does yeah, events. Synespia they do a lot of there. events in the cemetery where you can watch movies. Yeah, you um, went to an event there too. Right? We've done a couple like press media events, which are really cool. Um, there's also a family of peacocks that lives oh, there, yeah. so they're just wild peacocks all around the um, cemetery, and it's just it's a beautiful location that anyone can go to. You don't need yeah. a ticket. You can mm -hmm. just you just walk drive right in, in and walk around. Um, and it's also really cool because it's right next to, oh God, what is it? The Paramount lot is mm -hmm. right next to it. Yep. And I actually did a Paramount um, like Halloween tour where they went through and they're talking oh, about like cool. some of the stuff, like some of like the ghost kind of stories that they have there. But a part of it was they because they, they have like as you're walking on like because it shares a wall with it. So like here's the lot and here's the cemetery and they have like crypts with like really beautiful stained glass and you'll be literally walking on the paramount lot and if you look over you just see the back side of the stained glass that's like that's literally so cool. in these yeah um and they yeah they brought us through like there's like a gate too that you can just like go through which so that was a really cool tour if they if they that's do that awesome. around halloween i didn't weekend. even know that was a thing that they did that's yeah we did cool. that one halloween um there's another really cool cemetery, the Pierce Brothers Westwood Village Memorial Park and Mortuary. This one's interesting because it's like in like the city part um, of LA, and like you're li like I didn't even know it was there. I was doing um, a like um, true crime tour through LA where they brought you like in a van, and then um, they're like this like you know the you know, the little middle part where you could got, get out and stretch was like, oh, we'll go into the cemetery. And like, it's literally like this really tall building that has a bank at the bottom. And then you go around the corner and all of a sudden you're in this little mini cemetery. And you're like, how did I and not I'm like, see this before? Wait a second. Yeah. Um, but like, once you're in there, it's like this, it's like a, again, like a, it's just, it's like a very beautiful spot. They, um, and that's the same. Most cemeteries you can just, if yeah. it's during like, I think a Hollywood forever closes on a regular basis at like 5 PM. So yeah. any but other time, you could just hours? walk in it's it's hang out yeah bring a picnic it's a park lunch. yeah i mean i'm sure the spirits would really appreciate having you know company some visitors you can go and sit and have a picnic that's one thing we do anywhere we go we love to find like a cool old cemetery there's mm -hmm. an amazing one in chicago there's i can never say the name of the one in paris in france the really oh, huge yeah. one on the side of the mountain that is just like you could spend days there mm -hmm. it is so beautiful there's um some amazing ones in new york and we will in philly we will just go get something to eat and we just go find yeah. a spot and enjoy our lunch and hang out and mm -hmm. it's it's just such a relaxing quiet experience yeah and cool cemeteries like another one on my want to go list which i'm going to this year is new orleans I know they're like they have the Amazing really cool cemeteries. cemeteries and theirs are a little bit different than most because they can't dig yeah. to bury bodies. They put them like above ground, um, which is really cool. Um, I have one on my want to visit that is pie in the sky. Probably never, ever, ever going to happen. Never say never. I'm trying to uh, kill a gnat. Sorry. Chernobyl. <laughs> really? Yeah. But they're still like, isn't it still radioactive? It's not as bad. No, but that's still radioactive. That's like playing with the one thing. What was it talking about on Dangerous Toys? The lab kit. You're yeah, like, but it's not that much radiation. It's, it's just not a little much. bit. Nature has taken over and is healing the area. You need a. You need like the full. It's one hundred percent impossible. Suit. There's a movie about it, Chernobyl Diaries, uh, where they Wait, try you to can't, get you in. Can't get to it. I th actually, you know what? So I was watching YouTube videos. You can do anything. And I if think you, want you to can hard do tours, but again, right now. 
I don't think is a good time to go to Russia. Yeah. Um, well, but really. <laughs> I mean, there's I that, there's radiation. There's a lot there's of barriers. There's a lot of barriers, which is why I'm like, this will probably never, ever it's happen. Gonna, just but later. Let me put it into the universe. Cause yeah. I mean, yeah, like I said, like I feel, I, I've watched some YouTube videos of people who did like do tours. You have to bring in? the, Oh, the meter thing. Yeah, you have to bring the meter with you to like check to make sure things are You're cool. Not die of radiation but, poisoning. Um, I mean, yeah, because like once the disaster happened, like everyone just like pick up, picked up and left, yeah. left everything behind. So like, if oh, you they, go into be so cool just to see what is left, the stuff that's left yeah. behind. I know you can't like take anything from right. there because like you know it's been it's full it's, of radiation, it's full of radiation. <laughs> but I don't know. That's my that would be cool. Really, really cool. Want that's to. your top, your top bucket list of where you want to go. Um, I, impossible bucket list. I have, um, which I think you have two Waverly Hills. Yeah, I want to go there too. Um, so that's in Louisville, Kentucky, mm-hmm. and it was originally a two-story wooden building, which is crazy because if you see it now, oh, it's, it's like it's huge, a giant, not two-story wooden building. Yeah. So it was, uh, it opened in 1910, and it was essentially um, a tuberculosis hospital. So you imagine the amount of people that died there, and mm-hmm. in a lot of these like older hospitals, um, even like uh, Pennhurst Asylum, mm-hmm. people were not treated very well no unfortunately. they were not really taken care of even though they were in facilities that they were supposed to be taken care of but imagine having you know tens of thousands of people not enough staff um i mean it's just a recipe for disaster and a mm-hmm. lot of people died in really terrible circumstances um any ghost hunting show or like documentary i've seen about waverly hills is pretty scary like a lot of the evidence that they've gotten most ghost hunting shows are just kind of blowing smoke there's a lot of stuff where you're like i don't believe you They're like i heard this and but, you're like mm, i think that's someone's stomach right i think that was the other guy in the background behind <laughs> the camera but if you watch like a lot of youtube videos and just people that are not necessarily like professional ghost hunters that yeah. are just people that want to investigate it it is scary it's a scary place i want to go there. and i really definitely want to check that place out road trip let's road get trip. spooky road trip Kentucky. Um, Island of the Dolls in Mexico City. So that is definitely looks cool, but I feel like I've seen so much garbage about it, like people on ghost hunting shows and stuff where I'm like, yeah, but I want to see those dolls up close and personal. We like dolls. Like, imagine an island with nothing but that guy. Yeah. I mean, it would be super cool to go to. I don't know that, like... Any of the evidence that I've seen is very, No, I don't think that's a place that's, like, really... It's yeah, just I, I think it's just more like a, yeah, it's creepy because, you know, people are freaked out by dolls. Which I don't understand. That doll never did anything to anybody. <laughs> um, What else? Oh, uh, Dracula's Castle Oh, um, in Romania. So uh, it's basically not really his castle. It was where he was imprisoned at. Oh. But it looks amazing. And I've always wanted to go to Romania. And if you're going to go to Romania, you're going to see where Vlad the Imperial yeah. was imprisoned. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah. That's a little bit of a journey. They did, I forget, you know those, like, giveaway things where they're like, win a stay in Dracula's castle or wherever, oh and you have to pay. What are these You have to, like, sign up. You're like, oh, sign up and pay whatever yeah. amount, um, and you can win a stay there. They did one there, and this was, I feel like it was going around around COVID time, so I don't know if anyone actually won huh. it. I saw it on Facebook, and I was like, do I want to do that? That's cool. Probably. I would do that. But I felt like it was a little bit of a scam, so I didn't I didn't engage in it. But, you know, <laughs> there was that. Um, I said Edinburgh Castle. Um, been there. I've been there. It's really cool. They have a dog cemetery there. Aww. Um That was all the soldiers' dogs. And, like, they have uh, – some of them date back to um, 1837. So I'm just like, oh, Ghost dogs. They care about the dogs. I the cats. <laughs> I think they only had... I feel like they're... Were they more dog people? Yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> like, they're more dog people. Um, I have... I don't know if this is how you say it. Airedale Mental Hospital. This is in Victoria, Australia. Ooh. Um, I've been to a lot of places. I've never been to Australia. I've never And been. I feel like if you're going to go anywhere to see a haunted place, go to a psychiatric hospital. Oh, yeah. you're like... Chances are very high mm-hmm. you're going to get some sort of There's evidence. There. Um, so this was basically... In, Vic- in um, 1876, due to Victoria's growing population of so-called, they called them lunatics, um, it, they ha- housed over 13,000 patients, and most of them tragically died there. So it was the same kind of situation of improper care, understaffed, yeah. um, but it's supposedly very haunted. We have been to Penhurst Asylum, Ooh. and this is outside of Philly. 
when we first went, we were in Philly and we really wanted to go there. And I was like, let's just reach out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I reached out. The guy that owns it is a super cool guy. And he was like, yeah, come on down. We're setting up for a haunt. So like there's parts of it that you can't. It was, um, I think, end of summertime when we went mm -hmm. there. And he's like, there's parts that you're not going to be able to go to because we're, we're constructing the haunt. Because they do uh, basically like a haunted walkthrough during September and October. But he's like, anywhere else that's not condemned, you're more than welcome to hang out. And he's like, you can shoot. So we went and we like shot some video. We shot photos. And the place is insane. It's huge. Um, one of our friends that was with us that um, he's a photographer friend and he is like terrified and he didn't tell us that mm -hmm. he was scared of like haunted places until we got there. And he's like, yeah, normally I would not be caught dead here when it got dark. He's like, no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Like, bye. if you guys want to stay, you can stay, but I'm out of here. And he wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> like I didn't notice this until the very end, but he wouldn't go anywhere by himself. <laughs> And funny so, system. Yeah. But we had basically like full reign of the entire place for the exception of the places that were condemned because they were dangerous mm -hmm. and there was like holes in the floor and stuff. Um, and it is super spooky. We actually got to go back the following year to do the haunt, which is crazy because it's through the actual cool. asylum. Yeah. Um, so if you ever get ghost thing, they're like, what's this fake ghost thing? Yeah, right no. here. but they, they like really go all out and now they do a, um, an event there. It's called Paracon. It's like a paranormal mm. convention. So they've definitely like embraced the, the whole haunted aspect yeah. of the location. And I don't know how much of it, if they ended up fixing up the parts that are condemned or for they're just like, you can only go into, you know, yeah. A, B and C, but it's a really, really cool experience. And it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. You have to take a dirt road out there. We actually... The first time we got an Uber and we're like in a minivan. And then to try, the problem was we got there fine, but to try to get someone to come get you. Oh, that's when it's, not, they're like, I'm not, you don't want to go down that road. Yeah. We had a couple people cancel on us. The second time we went, we rented a car and we, Smart. yeah, we were able Just to rent do a car. everything. And now, now they do more events there. So I feel like more people are going there for a while. It was closed down until this guy bought it mm. a couple of years back or maybe more than a couple of years, but it's definitely a really cool place to visit. Um, I, I could go on forever. I know, that's the thing. We're going to have to do a part two because there's just so many cool spooky places that we've been, we want to go. Um, if you've been to a really cool spooky place that we didn't talk about today, let us know. Um, we'll add it to our list. Yeah, we'll add it to our want to list. And um, if you've had any crazy experiences that have happened to you there, please share yeah. with us because we'd love to hear yeah, those. It's always good to have like stories. little notes of things that have happened to certain people. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's cooler when you go to a place and something happens you didn't know about and then someone else corroborates your story yeah. and you're like, that happened to oh, me hey, too. Oh, that also happened. Yeah. I also got baby powder uh, mm -hmm. in my face. Yeah. So I think that'll do it for this episode of Let's Get Spooky. We look forward to hearing your uh, spooky stories of cool locations. And until next time, don't forget to stay